So today I'm going to be talking about semiconductors, specifically how they're bonded, how conduction works, and then how semiconduction works. And why? Why are semiconductors so interesting and important? Uh, because I'm not sure whether you've heard of semiconductors before. Well, let's start by looking at my box of goodies. So I think uh, you've already spent some time in the lab already, and you've probably come across quite a few different uh, components that are semiconductors without realizing it. So here, this is, uh, hopefully you can see these, they're really tiny, but these are some diodes and they're made out of semiconducting materials. LED, it's a light emitting diode, right? So that's also a semiconducting material. Here we've got an LDR, uh, light dependent resistor, semiconducting material. Aha. One of the most important, so this was a very important invention from the from the 40s, and this is a transistor, and we're going to be talking more about transistors later in the course, but they're made out of semiconductors, and the ubiquitous microchip. So chips are also made out of semiconductors, and the reason why they're called chips is because they're actually made of a little slither or a little chip of a silicon wafer, and silicon is the most used semiconducting material uh, in the industry. So all of these things are semiconducting materials, and you find them in all electronics these days, right? So uh, if you open up well, any, uh, any electronic device, so this is uh, an old telephone, part of an old telephone. Here you see a chip, just like the ones that you have in the lab uh, with its little legs, that's called a, a dip style chip. But if you pull apart other devices these days, you don't tend to see individual components, but actually you see these big black chips embedded onto the device. And this is a slightly different connection style, so SM, SMBs. Um, and yeah, like these are the things, if, if the things that make the world go round, right, these days. So you take an old uh, telephone, so this is an old mobile phone that I pulled apart earlier, and you can also see what makes them work. Yeah, semiconducting materials, chips everywhere, right? Uh, now, semiconductors, so you can see they're all over the place, but why are they so important? Well, in this little chip, they're also known, instead of chips, they're also known as ICs, integrated circuits. And why are they called integrated circuits? Well, actually, what you have on one of these little chips is an integration of many, 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 many components. So these are discrete components, the ones that I showed you earlier. So they're individual components that they do one thing. But on here, on one chip, you can have up to 10 to the power of 7, 10 to the power of 9 individual components all integrated onto one chip and it's that technology that has allowed us to go from computers back in the 50s that would take up like an entire room to now having like a, a mobile phone right that, that you can just well uh, yeah this one's pulled apart but yeah it, it fits in your pocket right with all of that processing power so here's a photo in fact and this photo is uh, of a hard drive, right, from the 1950s. And you can see here, it's so large, they have to use a forklift to get it into a plane. Now, this is a five megabyte hard drive, right? Five megabytes. Let's put that into perspective, because I now have a smartphone that has, it's got like a, a nano SD card of 64 gigabytes, I think, in my mobile phone, right? This is five megabytes. And look at the size, the physical size of this thing. Now, five megabytes is about the, the size of one MP3, so one song. All you can put on that is one song. So if it wasn't for semiconducting materials, our technology wouldn't have become as small or as fast uh, with the processing power that we have today. So semiconductors have really changed the world around us and shaped, shaped the technology that we now have. So that's what I want to talk about actually how the semiconductors work and what are they in the coming uh, in the coming slides so these are the big players in the semiconducting industry you can see their rank here and their sales uh, and yeah so a lot of them you will have heard of already samsung intel toshiba so some of them are household names but not all of them and that's because a lot of these companies they, they make all of the the chips and the devices behind behind the scenes so they're not necessarily consumer products 
So the semiconductor industry is very important, very big players. And what I want to talk about is not just why they're important semiconductors, but actually what they are and how they work. And to do that, I've got to go right back to the basics and first discuss how normal conductors conduct electricity. And then we can build on that. But before I get started, I just want to introduce you to a little puzzle to get you thinking, right? So this is a video clip that I found on YouTube, and I'll provide the links so that you can check this out for yourself. There's actually quite a few examples of this experiment. So here you can see an LED. It's at room temperature. It's being dipped into liquid nitrogen, and liquid nitrogen is around 77 Kelvin. So it's a huge, huge drop in temperature. And you can see that the LED starts to change color. Now, I've already said LEDs are also made up of semiconducting materials. So by the time you get to the end of this topic, hopefully you'll be able to explain why exactly this is uh, happening. So for now, let's go back and let's look at how normal metallic conductors work.